All right, guys. So today we're going to be testing self-defense items from AliExpress. Now, before we get started, apparently there is a large gap between what I consider something that is self-defense and what AliExpress considers something that is a self-defense item. Now, to me, to consider something as a self-defense item, it needs to be something that you can defend yourself with, right? But <laughs> AliExpress says that this is a self-defense item. This is one of the first things I saw when I searched self-defense. This is probably the smallest knife I've ever seen in my life. I don't know what in the world you think you would defend with this. Like, what, like, what are you, what are you gonna do? Give somebody a, the equivalent of a deep paper cut? Now, this is a slip joint knife. That means that there's no locking mechanism. So right away, you wouldn't use a knife like this for self-defense because a slip joint knife is very, very easy to like, if you're gonna stab into something, it's very easy for it to fold on your fingers and cut you. I'm going to assume that it's probably not even sharp. Now we have the sharpness tester. Now, I would be very surprised if this does any more than, or any less than like 300, I would be impressed. Really? 265. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you could do a little something with this. Let's do a little, a little paper test. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe that 265 was a, was a lie. We must have caught just like one little sharp, one little sharp, one little sharp piece of it or something. This is not a very good self-defense item. This is like really horrible. It does have a pretty pointy, pretty, pretty pointy tip. Other than that, as far as defending yourself, you ain't doing much. Our next item, I don't even remember what this is exactly. It does say, uh, danger, be careful to hit people. So I guess it's something to hit people with. I don't remember what this is supposed to be. Under pressure is what it, what it is. Why is it trying to explode? What is this thing doing? Oh man, why is it under pressure? What is this? Is this some type of stop from exploding device? Oh, maybe. Oh, okay. <laughs> why is it doing that? So is this supposed to like I assume it, like, it wants to explode out, so I assume it's supposed to do something, like, explode out in some way. Oh. Oh, wait a minute. I see what happens here. You push it, and that automatically kind of goes like this. And this kind of wants to just explode. I'm just going to let it go. We have a stick. So what is collapsible? What just beat? What, what, like, is this a stick? Is you're supposed to like... Did that just extend? Is that what you're supposed to do? Like, use this tip and beat somebody with it? Like, this has to be just a one-time use. Why, why, are you supposed to carry this with you just in your pocket and then just the one time you need it, maybe like whip this thing out and then like, like fight somebody off with it or something? I mean, look at, just look at the flex on that. That is not gonna do anything to anybody except make them upset. So let's just see like how this would go down. Now, I guess since I can't collapse this, let's imagine this thing is collapsed. This is gonna be in your pocket. Someone's going to try to attack you and you're gonna go, hold on. And you're gonna pull this thing out and it's gonna go, and it's gonna explode. And you're gonna go, get back, mister, get back, get back. And like maybe, maybe you could like poke them like this. Maybe that would work. Oh, that seems to be, <laughs> that worked out so well. It just shoved the tip inside of itself. So now you lost your metal tip. Great for self-defense. So I guess if you're not gonna poke them, maybe you could like hit them. Be like, hey, stop it, stop it. Bad dog. Maybe that could get them away. Maybe if you hit them on both sides, you're like, Oh, 
Oh no. Oh, now we're broken. Okay, so now we only got half of a stack. And you can use this like a whip. Maybe you could take this and maybe you could like wrap it around them and then you could like like give them a big hug or something and maybe that would maybe that would scare them off. So <laughs> as far as this collapsible collapsible uh baton, I guess you would call it or something. Don't get this for self-defense. This is gonna do absolutely nothing for you. All right, guys, so before we go any farther, this video is sponsored by AirUp. So, AirUp, if you don't know, is a revolutionary water bottle that flavors your water with scent. And I'm going to show you how it works. It's very simple. So, just take the top off. Of course, you just fill the bottle up with water. And now, once your bottle is filled up, you just pick a scent. They have, AirUp has all kinds of scents. We are going to go with cherry. Now, each packet comes with three scent pods, and each scent pod can flavor 1.3 gallons of water. So you just take the scent pod, open it up. So once you get your pod out, here's how it works. The pod has a little teardrop shape, and the straw has a little teardrop shape. You just match those up, push it on there, and you have to kind of pull it up just a little bit. And now, whenever you drink your water, the water is going to be aerated through the pod, and then the scent is going to be added to the water, and then you'll, you will taste whatever flavor you have, like I said, in this case, cherry. And you can hear it bubble whenever you drink. That's how you know it's lined up. And then your water tastes like whatever, uh, whatever scent you choose. So if you're interested, they have this all-new steel bottle. They also have just classic plastic bottles. And that's not all. So for the month of March, if you buy any starter kit and you use code FREEFAVE5, you will get a free five-pod variety pack. And in that pack, you will get wild berry, orange vanilla swirl, peach, watermelon, and raspberry lemon. If you are interested, all of the links will be in the description. So our next item isn't something that you're not gonna like physically defend yourself with it. You're not gonna like hit somebody or anything like that. This could scare somebody away. This is a, I think they call it maybe a personal alarm or something. The idea is you would put this like on your keychain or something. If somebody is bothering you or whatever, you would pull this cord an alarm goes off and it gets people's attention or whatever. Now, the reason I bought this, not because I don't think that it works, but because it said, I believe it said that it was 140 decibels. Or maybe it was 150. Whatever it was, it was high enough that I was like, if you know anything about uh, how decibels work, I was like, I don't think it's that high. It looks like it also has a little, has a light. That was way... I don't know why I looked right into that. I knew that was a light, but way brighter than I thought. I have a uh, decibel meter. You can see just with me talking normal, it's about 80 decibels, which I believe 80 decibels is like the standard level of a normal conversation. We'll set this to just save the highest decibel reading. This is like, I have no idea how loud this is gonna be. Also measuring this like maybe just a few inches away. I think technically you're supposed to measure this stuff like like five feet away or three feet away or something to get like an accurate reading not like right up on the sensor but we're gonna go close just to give it the best chance possible all right let's see 115.6 so not 135 or 40 or whatever it claimed one thing i can tell you is despite it not being as loud as it claims it is, and I don't, I'm sure you can't p see it, you can't pick it up on the microphone, that was absolutely ear piercing. And you pulled this, this is gonna get everybody's attention. This is crazy loud, and this would get anybody's attention. So I'm gonna pull this like right, right on top of the sensor. We'll see if maybe we can get that, that number a little bit higher when we're right on top. 134.9, right on top of the sensor. So, closer to what they claim. I'm sure that's probably how they tested it, was just jammed it as close as they could to the sensor. So, I mean, that's it. Not really much to test. Ear-piercingly loud, and uh, 
I think absolutely would work. So now we're gonna get into the fun stuff. And I'm just gonna go over this fun stuff pretty quickly and then we're gonna get into the, to the real test. These were called Buddha beads and they were like, aver they're very, very heavy. They were advertised as a like self-defense necklace. And the theory is, I guess you could like take them and kind of like beat somebody with them and like hit them or maybe like use this as like some way to like choke somebody or something along those lines. It appears that it's made out of some type of like wire and it's not supposed to break. It's supposed to like be very strong and hold a lot of weight. I think this thing is a disaster waiting to happen, but we're still going to test it. Gary, of course, will help us do the job. I just want to just hit with it and just see. I'm just going to wrap around my wrist. Let's just hit them. See what that feels like. Not gonna lie, that was a little bit scary. In your mind, you think that it's gonna like come back and hit you. You just don't want that, because that would hurt. I think this could be leaned more towards like maybe, like if you came up behind somebody and you like put the necklace on them and then you get, get them by the neck and then you could like slam them down, maybe? If you were that strong, you could, you could come up behind somebody throw it over top of them, and then like use these pieces and like, just like choke them. That seems pretty strong. Let's just hit them with it one more time. I mean, that's pretty good. You can really get a good hit with that. I mean, that, that actually is very strong. That is like denting the table really bad. I can tell you one thing, I wouldn't want to be hit by that. Really put some power behind it. Okay. Let's try to break a cinder block. Put some safety glasses on. I don't know about you, but I'm not really a fan of uh, concrete chunks flying in my eyes. Let's see, let's wrap this around. Oh, that came back and kind of hit me. That hurt a little bit. I can hear the chunks like hitting the walls and stuff. This is definitely way stronger than I thought. I thought maybe one, like maybe two to three hits and it was gonna break, but this is like denting the metal. Let's go ahead and let's put it on the crane scale and just pull it apart and see how much, see how much it takes to pull it apart and see how strong it really is. All right, it's been a while since we broke out the crane scale. I think, you guys let me know in the comments what you think, but I think if we get past 150 pounds, I'm satisfied with that. I'm impressed. I don't know if we're even gonna have enough uh, scale left. I don't want this to snap at me. We're already 150, 160. This is gonna snap. I think there it goes. Oh. Don't tell me. What? The crane scale died. Hopefully it got caught on the second camera before it died. I reviewed the footage, and from what I could see in the little tiny camera screen, I think the final weight that we got was 313 pounds. That's impressive. For the Buddha beads, if that is something that you would like, I guess, like for some of you want a necklace that strong, it's definitely strong, and it can definitely hold a lot of weight. Next we have these things, which, I don't remember what they're called, but they're kind of like brass knuckles. And it's kind of just like a thing, like you just hold it between your fingers and then kind of just goes in your palm. Then you can like, that actually might be pretty legit. That actually seems pretty strong. Now on the table, uh, I mean, this felt like it was gonna be pretty good. So let's, let's see. That's not, that's that sucks. <laughs> I didn't even hit that hard. Like, that was not, that was not very hard at all. This is almost nothing. I can feel how bad it's gonna hurt. Let me go just a little bit harder. Okay, I think there's a chance you could like really damage your hand if you were to use this. Like, say if you like, like really punched hard, I think you would severely damage your hand. Cause even just, ow, that little tiny bit where this plastic piece is just like jamming itself into your palm. Ah, there's something that does not feel good. I don't know. I'm gonna try it 
try a different grip. Mm, that hurts. And that, I mean, that's really, if it hurts that hard, that bad with hitting it as easy as I am, I can't even imagine if you actually like swung like full force. I mean, maybe in like a, in a self-defense situation where you're like your adrenaline is pumping and you're like, you're just don't not feeling pain at the time. Maybe this could help you. But I mean, at least like right here in the garage, no way. That is just gonna be, that is gonna be so painful. And it's really, it's probably gonna do more damage to you than it is the person. Would not recommend that. Next, we have a knockoff uh, tactical whip. You've all seen the tactical whip video. This one like breaks in half and there's like nothing in the handle. And this one feels extremely cheap. Like very, very cheap. I'm concerned a little bit about it because if I move the wire, I can feel it wiggling inside the handle. So somebody's trying to attack you, you will pull out your whip and you're like, hey, stay away from me. That would actually probably scare somebody. Don't get any closer to me. Backhand. Something I don't really like is as I'm hitting the whip, the handle is spinning in my hand, which is unscrewing the slower part which I guess you could remedy that pretty easily, but that, that is something that's happening. Ow, it comes back and hits me right in the stomach. I mean, despite that wire being loose a little bit, I mean, this is, seems to be pretty, pretty good. Get some swing speed. I mean, you could really, really whip this thing. The time it hit it so hard, the, the wire's starting to get bent. I mean, I'm gonna give that a pass. Especially like if you, if you were to pull this out and then like you had to use it one time, I think this thing was only like four or five bucks. You just buy another one if you were afraid that it might break. Yeah, I mean, that's, that is definitely gonna like, if somebody's on your case and you pull out this, that is gonna, that's gonna get them away. That is gonna, that would hurt. This is better than I thought. I thought the wire was gonna come out really fast. Looks like it doesn't. So that is, uh, it's actually a pretty good buy. We also got <laughs> these, which I can't wait for. These are Kuba Kicks. Spikes that you tie inside of your boot laces on your shoes. So then that way you can, <laughs> whenever you tie them to your shoes, you can kick somebody with them and defend yourself. Can you see that? Yeah. I don't even know I can get my leg up that high. Uh, boot spikes that I have attached to my working boots, or at least my, my one working boot. I lift, I put it on one, and then I lift it off of one, so that way I can kick with and without, and I can uh, judge the difference and see what it feels like to kick with this thing. I think I mentioned that. That's the whole idea, is you put this on your boots, and then you can kick somebody, and it's like self-defense. Let's kick without first. I don't feel, <laughs> I'm not really good at getting my leg up that high. I mean, that doesn't, that's not too bad. I'm not a, like a professional kicker, but that's, let's go with the spikes. Stop moving. I can barely hit a steel target. Oh, oh, ow. That was significantly worse. That hurt, that hurt me so bad. That, do you just feel that plastic just like smash into your foot through the boot? If you had boots that had like some type of like guard on the top, maybe it wouldn't be a problem. Let me do it again. Oh, oh yeah, let's not do that again. That like, my foot might be bruised. Now these boots also, they're not steel toe, but like steel toe is not gonna protect the top of your foot. You would need like some type of some type of guard like up here at the top. That sucks. I'm gonna do it without one more time. Yeah, without is like I could probably I could probably kick way harder without. Oh yeah, that doesn't hurt at all. But like those don't hurt nearly as bad as with the spikes. Th th like <laughs> that's the same concept as like the brass knuckles. Whenever you hit, it just ends up hurting you worse than. 
uh, the person you're trying to hurt. I would not recommend these. Potentially, maybe putting these like on the bottom of your boots, if you were in like, say maybe, I don't know, ice or something, and kind of using them like, and using them to get traction in your boots. As far as self-defense, no. You are gonna hurt yourself way worse than you were gonna hurt the other person. And last but not least, we have the good old miniature baseball bat. And I literally think that this one, this is probably gonna be the best. I mean, this thing is solid. For as far as defending yourself, like hitting somebody or whatever, can't beat this. All right, obviously our heavy bag is gonna simulate our person. Let's just go ahead and get this out of the way. We all know how this ends. This is perfect. I think this one is 24 inches wide, or 24 inches long. <laughs> Not 24 inches wide, 24 inches long. And this will be perfect. Perfect one hand operation, beating somebody. I mean, just, you can two hand it. I actually, for a second there, I thought I heard a crack, like the wood. Like the wood cracked or something, but I don't see anything. But yeah, it's a wooden baseball bat. It's exactly what you'd expect. I know that I said whenever I was hitting the uh, the punching bag with this bat that I thought I heard a crack, and that crack still could have come from something inside of the punching bag. I was looking at this sticker on the bat, this warning sticker, and it makes me believe that it could have come from the bat. Do not use this bat with Hera do dolls. Hera dolls. Fraud duct is designed for use with soft strike T balls only. I guess if it's only made to be used with soft strike balls, there is a chance that the wood could be kind of weak. So we're gonna hit center block a bunch of times and see if it breaks. Now, if this is going to break or crack, it's probably going to do it over the corner or something. So, let's, let's hit it right here. Mm. I'm sure a lot of people saw that coming. All that vibration just, like, went straight back into my hand. All the bat actually has some, like, kind of significant damage. Actually, that's holding up like really good. So it this way. I did not expect that to be so painful. <laughs> the vibrations coming back into your hands just sucks. But you know, I think we got our answer, to be honest with you. I mean, that's all the damage that we sustained from smashing a cinder block. So I think the bat is actually uh, actually pretty durable. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching me test these <laughs> self-defense product products from AliExpress. If we've learned anything from this video, it's maybe don't buy your self-defense products from AliExpress. Unless maybe like the, the necklace or maybe the baseball bat. Uh, other than that, maybe go somewhere else. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one.